drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So I had uh, requested a number of uh, uh, topics from Patreon, from patrons. So I'll be discussing those as well in the coming days. Novavax is something that people have been asking a lot about. So I asked on Twitter today, what are your outstanding questions? I've done a lot of Novavax discussions. So here are some of the answers to some of the questions that I am aware of. So let's start a discussion. And quick references as usual. So this is the Twitter thread. The link to this thread is in the description as well. This is an interesting interview with the Novavax's CEO by Bloomberg. This is December 21, but still very useful. So I would request you to watch it. It is a few, few minutes, not too long. This is the December 15th Novavax safety and efficacy of Novavax Co V2373 in adults in the United States and Mexico. This is their Novavax submits request to the US FDA for emergency use authorization for COVID-19 vaccine, January 31st. And then shows 94% efficacy. Here, this is WHO, how effective is the vaccine and they're giving their efficacies as well. Then this is a Yale article about Novavax. So with this, let's very quickly look at some of the things before I go to Twitter, Let's level set ourselves, Novavax, and I'll explain some of the things later on. That is why I'm not doing them here. It is, somebody had asked that, is it stabilized, the spike protein in the Novavax? Is that pre-fusion stabilized? Is that kind of locked? So the answer is yes, it is pre-fusion stabilized. Temperature. So I have done this discussion in the past as well. The CEO, I was listening to him as well. He said. We are very happy that you do not need freezing cold temperatures, just a refrigeration. Plus at room temperature, it can live there as well. So it is a stable vaccine, does not fall apart very quickly. Adjuvant is Matrix M. Matrix M is an adjuvant that comes from saponins that come from a plant. So it's a plant-based matrix M adjuvant. And I'll talk a little more about that as well. The basic idea of this adjuvant is to Adjuvant means helper. So the basic idea of the adjuvant is to help the immune system to recognize the vaccine faster and to respond to it faster. Is it RNA-based? No. It is a pre-formed spike protein, which is assembled in the form of a lipid nanoparticle. Not a lipid nanoparticle, but the virus particle. It looks like that. I always call it a bouquet of the spike proteins. <clears throat> Now, if you're not comfortable with the spike protein as a vaccine, then this is nothing but spike proteins. And I'll explain that why this may not be as serious. So I'll explain the mechanism of this vaccine's function in the context of various questions. This is just level setting us at this time. Is it made up of DNA like uh, DNA viruses, uh, adenoviruses? No. Can be given as a booster. So yes, there are trials happening right now where Novavax can be is te being tested to be given as a booster after, let's say, Moderna or Pfizer or other vaccines. So that may be a very interesting thing that if somebody is not comfortable, let's say, in a booster to say, I don't want to have another mRNA, they may be able to get Novavax. Fetal cells involved in the manufacturing or are is this vaccine made in fetal cells? The answer is no, it is actually made in uh, moth cells, butterfly cells. So no, the vaccine's RNA is injected into a bacteria. That bacteria is inf infected into moth cells. Then the bacteria sits in there with the moth cells and makes the spikes. Those spikes are then harvested from this little factory. And these are bottled up with adjuvants. Can spike bind with the ACE2? Yes. So the spike is normal structure of the spike with the RBD. So it can bind with ACE2. And then function of adjuvant, and we're going to talk about that. So this is we getting level set. So now, <laughs> Texas, Mexis, butterfly ovaries. Okay. Now let's see the questions. And please don't mind Luffy. He is just not happy that he can't go out. Okay. So... <clears throat> 
Jean M. Oliveira says, request for assistant to assess assistance to assess risk benefit of getting Novavax based on the current dominance of Omicron and assessment of the age groups vaccines. So Gene, this is a very good question. And I also wanted to see so far, the Novavax has not given any data in the US at least for Omicron. So we can only have a conjecture at this time that I think it will work fine, but that data is not there. Then Sarah says, yes, thank you, where we can read and publish trials data. So trial data, number one here, I have this link in the description. This is New England Journal of Medicine. So let me very quickly read some part of it. This is December 15, 2021. So today's February 77. So almost one, uh, one month and a half month kind of a thing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, here are the results. The results are there were 29,949 participants who underwent randomization between December 27 to Feb 18, 2021. So this is 2021, February, not 22. So this is Delta and Wuhan kind of time. Actually, not even Delta. This is December 27 to, yeah, it's earlier Delta or Wuhan. So total of 29,582, median age 47, received at least one dose, 19,714 received vaccine and 9,868 received placebo. So almost one to two ratio or two to one ratio. So over a period of three months, 77 cases of COVID-19 were noted, 14 among vaccine and 63 among placebo. And that brings the efficacy to 90.4%. The next is interesting, 10 moderate and four severe cases occurred. 10 moderate and four severe cases occurred, all in placebo recipients yielding vaccine efficacy against moderate to severe disease of 100%. So that was the, again, that is more of a pre-Omicron time, not Delta time. Then reactogenicity was mostly mild to moderate and transient, but was more frequent among Novavax recipient than among placebo recipient and was more frequent after the second dose than after the first dose, which is expected. So this is the, now I want to see the adverse effects as well. So here, data on solicited local and systemic adverse events were collected. And so what did we see? So let's see, let's see, I want to read the adverse effects. Results. Let me just quickly do a. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are the side effects? Solicited local and systemic adverse events were predominantly mild to moderate and transient, temporary. These events occurred more frequently with the vaccine. Fine. So, any local adverse events, 58% and 21.1% respectively after dose 1 and 78.9% and 21.7%, that is vaccine and placebo after dose 2. So, if 100 people got vaccine, dose 1, 58 will have adverse events. And if they got dose 2, then about 78.9% would have adverse events. So, now what are those adverse events? So, let me open up this chart. Come on, I need to make it bigger. They would not let me make it bigger here. Okay, so <clears throat> th these are the dose one. Tenderness, pain, erythema, swelling. So tenderness, pain is sort of pain, erythema is redness, swelling is swelling. So that is what they saw. Dose two as well, 
tenderness, pain, erythema and swelling, a little more tenderness, a little more pain, a little more redness, a little more swelling. Then systemic, dose one, headache, muscle pain, fatigue, malaise, nausea, vomiting, fever, joint pain. Interesting, headache was the most common, then muscle pain, fatigue, and then malaise, nausea, vomiting, fever, joint pain was a little more as well. Dose two, look at this. They actually kind of moved towards the right, so became more, more people involved. Headache, muscle pain, fatigue, malaise. So I would suspect that after dose one and two, headache, muscle pain, fatigue, malaise would occur almost more than 50%. Nausea, vomiting, fever, and joint pain. So these are the adverse events. Let's see if they have severe adverse events here. I have to go back to the previous. So severe adverse events, adverse events of special interest related to COVID-19, no episodes of anaphylaxis. That's very interesting. No evidence of vaccine associated enhanced COVID-19. So antibody enhancement. So no antibody enhancement. No events that triggered pre-specified pause rules were observed. So nothing that would have said, stop it, don't do any more of the trial. No episode of Guillain-Barré sy syndrome. No imbalance in myocarditis or pericarditis. That means it did occur. They'd simply say similar in both groups, vaccine and placebo. Or in vaccine-induced immune thrombosis with thrombocytopenia. So again, they're saying it occurred in both, but that was balanced as well. So these were observed during the relatively short safety follow-up period, shorter here, tables as 14. So we're going to go and look in that. All-cause mortality was balanced. Nine deaths occurred among vaccinated recipients and five occurred amongst placebo. But remember, the vaccinated group size was double as well. So 0.5% and 0.5%. Now I'm going to go to the table as 14 if I can find it here. Table as four, as five, as seventeen. A supplementary appendix. What? <laughs> it crashed. One second. They should have that data somewhere here. Original article. Results, figures and media. Table one, table two, three, four. Okay, so I'll have to go find it. They must have had that in some supplementary area. Okay, so that's one part that I have to do some more research to find it. It must be sitting in some supplementary area. So then, next question. So where we can find it? So I just showed you that. K-pop super strong says, 
it is it going to be a second generation vaccine that will produce more IgA than mRNA vaccines to prevent the spread of more infections, hopefully more than six months. So no, the IgA thing is still not the case. It is still intramuscular vaccine. It still is going to make more IgGs. Um, I watched the talk with the CEO and when they asked them that, hey, other vaccines are waning faster and please watch that talk as well. So they asked them that other vaccines are waning faster. How about your vaccine? And he said, it is, we think it is going to be six months and more. So he didn't say seven, eight, one year. He simply said six months and more. Imelin Head says, is there a safe alternative for long haulers who get worse after Moderna vaccine? If so, why? Could the adjuvant be harmful to long haulers and kids, remembering the adjuvant vaccine tied to nar narcolepsy in Europe during the bird flu pandemic? So good question. So let me try to answer some of them and some I'm going to draw. Is this a safer alternative for long haulers who got worse with Moderna mRNA vax? So the question is, what was the pathology behind the um, long hauling or behind the injury? If that was the production of uh, autoantibodies, then that is going to be similar for all vaccines. If that was because of the, let's say, um, spike protein and the immune system reacting incorrectly to messenger RNA producing spike proteins, then again here, this is one difference that I want to share that there may be a mechanism difference. So let's start from adjuvant first, and then we look at the mechanism. So matrix M has two parts of the adjuvants. I believe they call it A and B. So there are two adjuvants in it. Their job is one of these adjuvants has the quality of causing more B cell activity. So adjuvants are coming, these are saponins. They are like soap-like things, sticky things from a plant. The job is to irritate the immune system. And how do they irritate the immune system? They are um, little chemical molecules that when present in, the, in some part of the body, they would cause the local immune system cells to become agitated by their presence. And immune system cells are going to kind of look at these and become activated. And actually, they should become angry and activated. So when they become activated, they would start the cytokine release, and, and that would cause a chemotactic factors and more immune system cells will come over and the war would start. So these are kind of um, instigator of the war or they accelerate the immune response by agitating the immune response. One of their adjuvants is able to cause more agitation for the B cells. So the result is that produces more antibodies. The other adjuvant that is in there is more irritant to T cells. And so that causes more cytotoxic T cell production. And the end result is both of them together cause more production of cytotoxic T cells and antibody producing B cells. So the whole immune system is amplified instead of one arm or the other arm. This is a very similar thing as you must have seen with the Johnson & Johnson's trial. There, In their trial result, they had said that our vaccine causes more T cell activity. So here you would see that they have a matrix M with two adjuvant components that causes both of the arms of the immune system. Um, arms, or arms are innate and adaptive. This is two parts of the adaptive system both parts are activated, humoral and cytotoxic. Now, um, how is this structure basically done? The structure is this way that these saponins are, you can think of them as lipid nanoparticles as well, but they are very different from other lipid nanoparticle, which, for example, with Moderna or other, that these lipid nanoparticles for Moderna like vaccines or Pfizer. I'm making crystals for some reason because that's what I can make. So these nanoparticles have the 
messenger RNA in them and then they cross into a cell carrying the messenger RNA into the cell and the cell produces a spike protein. That is the Pfizer and Moderna. Here, the nanoparticle does not contain, but it's not really that kind of a nanoparticle that is going to vehicle the spike into the cells. Instead, it is just going to act as an, as an irritant for the immune system cells while the vaccine itself, the spikes, they are sitting there separately. So this is really a small solution. In that solution, there are some adjuvants and then there is this vaccine and these are all sitting together. Vaccines are attached, the spike proteins are attached to each other. So they're not free spike proteins that can just run around and go wherever they want. These are actually bound to each other on the tail ends. So they make this bouquet-like bouquet-like thing. And that is a vaccine particle. But this particle is not inside a lipid nanoparticle. Instead, with it nearby are the lipid nanoparticles. I shouldn't call them lipid nanos, soponins as well. And they act as an irritant for the immune system. Here is the important part of the mechanism, mechanistic difference, and that is the following. If this was a messenger RNA vaccine, then what will happen is, imagine, here is a, <coughs> excuse me, a normal tissue cell. Let's say, although muscle cells don't look like this, but let's say for our example, this is a muscle cell. In addition to this muscle cell, so let's say this is a deltoid muscle cell. In addition to this muscle cell, there are some other immune system cells as well that are here. And when we deliver the messenger RNA like vaccine, <clears throat> then what happens is that vaccine with the lipid nanoparticle will be brought into the cells. And that could be a normal cell, for example, muscle cell or a fibroblast or other local cell. The, that particle can actually also go into macrophages and dendritic cells, so it can enter any cell. When it enters a cell, it releases the messenger RNA. That messenger RNA works with the ribosome of the cell to produce, so let's say this is the ribosome, so the messenger RNA works with the ribosome to produce the spike proteins and then the spike proteins are shattered and they, sh they are displayed in the surface and that is how the immune system reaction starts. So the takeaway here is that messenger RNA vaccines can send the messenger RNA in a regular normal cell plus immune system cells can pick it up as well. Good. The Novavax vaccine, on the other hand, is a, it's not wrapped in a lipid nanoparticle. It is really a cluster of spikes with adjuvants, right? This is what this vaccine is. So when you put that vaccine next to a regular cell, so let's say this is again deltoid, it is a regular cell, and the cell, the muscle cell looks at it and says, oh my God, I got this weird thing here. But this vaccine cannot get into the muscle cell, neither can muscle cell pick it up. So regular cells, fibroblasts, muscle cell, and other cells in the vicinity, they cannot just pick up the, the vaccine and process it. So they're spared from picking it up, displaying it, getting pummeled by the immune system. This vaccine bouquet will have to be picked up by the immune system cells. So what are the most important immune system cells that are sitting here? are going to be dendritic cells and then macrophages. Neutrophils can pick them up as well. And then that's it. So these are the main three types. Ma dendritic cells, macrophages, and neutrophils. Maybe some monocytes that are sitting in the boundary with the blood vessels might just pick it up as well. Now, these immune system cells, so keep in mind that normal tissue cell is not going to pick it up the immune system cell is going to pick it up and then this vaccine, these spikes that have been taken in by the immune system cell 
immune system is going to go bring them in, break them, these spikes, and then display them on its surface to activate the immune system, the remaining part of the immune system. This is the innata. So the question of can we have messenger RNA telling the cells to make more spikes or can we have messenger RNA, RNA running around in the body, which um, some folks have been saying, although incorrectly, but they've been saying. So if somebody has that concern without arguing with me and debating with me, if you have that concern, then the Novavax vaccine does not bring in any DNA or RNA that goes in the cell and makes spike proteins. Now, can this bouquet again go out in the blood vessels? I had that discussion before as well. Somebody said that I am incorrect. So I think saying that I am incorrect is easy. The best thing is to actually prove it with some paper, with some data, to which proves it the other way around. Can this particle enter a blood vessel and carry the vaccines, these pieces out? If this blood vessel, I discussed it a couple of days ago as well. If this blood vessel becomes inflamed and it becomes dilated and it has bigger holes through which the things can enter this blood vessel, or if the blood vessel because of local immune re reaction becomes torn in various places, then yeah, sure, these things can go in there. But majority of the time, you will see them either to go in the lymph and go in the lymph nodes and be picked up there by the lymph system or enter the local immune system cells. If there are some bouquets, I keep calling them bouquets, so my apologies, but that's a simpler way. These bouquets, if they enter, they are about 20 microns, I believe. So they, the virus is anywhere from 70, 80 to 100, 110 microns, this is 20, 30 micron. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when it goes into the blood vessels, then I have done this discussion that it can be then picked up by the macrophages in the spleen and they would clear it. That is a normal mechanism. Exactly what would happen, uh, again, we need to put some radioactive things on them and then let them loose in the body and see where do they go. Just like Pfizer had done their study, this study would need to be done. From a mechanism point of view, this is, the, this is what to expect. Now here, there is no production of new spikes. The spikes that have been injected are the spikes that you're going to get. So now if I go back here, the question, is this safer alternative for long haulers who got worst after Moderna or mRNA? So the question is, what caused it? So if it is something to do with messenger RNA itself, then sure, this, this vaccine is just the spikes. If the long hauling occurred or the vaccine injury occurred because of the spike production, then this is spikes as well. The, again, the difference is this is spike from outside. Here we'll produce the spike. So their mechanisms still are different. Could the adjuvant be harmful to long haulers and kids remembering the adjuvant's vaccine tied to encephalopathy in Europe during the bird flu pandemic? So far, as you saw with the side effects as well, there has been not really a lot of adjuvant-related injuries seen. But adjuvant is going to activate the immune system. So an immune system that has become active can cause local injury. That's the point of that. Thing, not to cause a local injury, but to become activated, the immune system. So is it better? I can't say. Really, this is the difficult part to predict how these vaccines would work other than looking at their trial results and say no anaphylaxis and no severe outcomes in the patients, no moderate or severe outcomes. And then they say balanced thrombocytopenia and myocarditis. So I need to look at that data to see what do they mean by balanced. Remember when the uh, <clears throat> Pfizer type vaccines came, sorry, the, what was that vaccine? Uh, Oxford vaccine. 
C-H-A-D-O-X-1. When that vaccine came out and there was a question of uh, thrombosis occurring, they said it was balanced. So in the beginning, they said it was balanced as well. And now we've taken almost a year to then finally realize that or recognize. So maybe there is a balance, but maybe that's not really the case. So we'll see. Next question. It's being used in Indonesia, so it would be great to see efficacy and safety data from them. So I was actually looking for that. I'll look into that and present it. I got the first dose of Pfizer in April and never got the second Pfizer. Okay. Question. Can I get the Novavax when available? So yes, they are saying that Novavax has been trialed as a booster after the other primary series. I would suspect that even if you'd never got the second one, you could get Novavax. And the reason, and I had said this for the previous vaccines as well. At that time, people did not agree with me. But later on, UK actually proved that they did mix and match and they actually had good results from it. Because at the end of the day, a spike protein is a spike protein. We are showing a spike protein to the immune system. Now, that is shown by making it through messenger RNA or by making it through a DNA or injecting it from outside. The spike protein is a spike protein and the body is being trained to respond to that. If the body was being trained to respond to something else, for example, you have the spike protein shown in one vaccine and the other vaccine has something else, let's say new N protein, nucleocapsid protein. Then your training is becoming different. You're showing one thing one time and the other thing the other time. For immune system, these are two different antigens. But if you're showing the same antigen again and again, whichever route it is, whichever mechanism it is, they should work the same. Okay, so continuing on. <clears throat> People say that it is more like the traditional vaccines. I know the adjuvant is new, but are there other risks that we would not expect to see in, say, a traditional influenza vaccine? Does the cluster of spike proteins raise spike risks or the other short dev time? So the, the way to look at a vaccine, for example, this, are two. One is to look at its mechanisms and have a conjecture to, to say this is the mechanism. For example, here, we're looking at the mechanism and saying, in case of messenger RNA type vaccines, there is a training of the cell to produce more vaccine particles, correct? Or spike particles. In the case of Novavax, there is no additional spike that can be produced. Whatever is given is given. That's all the body has. Wherever it takes it, that is the antigen, that is the amount that is there. So that in itself kind of is different. Now, an adjuvant is interesting. And if you, the second part now to look at, I just talked about adjuvant, so I didn't want to repeat it. The second part to look at is the clinical outcomes. So we're looking at mechanism from that point of view, it looks safer than others. Again, I am a believer of messenger RNA vaccines. I took Moderna, so I'm fine with that. And so I don't say that Moderna is less safe than here, but I would say if somebody has that concern, then here is another vaccine that does not work that way in the mechanism. So if they have a concern with the messenger RNA going into a cell, uh, requesting the cell to make spikes and they feel this is not the best thing, then this vaccine will not do it. This vaccine is really like a dead virus. It's not a dead virus, meaning a virus that cannot do anything and has just a spike proteins attached to it. That is what it is. And even the whole virus is not there, just the spike proteins. So it is kind of interesting from that point of view. Now, clinical outcomes, you just saw that they seemed okay. I was actually looking for some data from Malaysia and other places to be able to pull the clinical outcome from the production as well. And I think we all know that the clinical outcomes or trials are done in, you know, trial one, two, three. And then when the 
drug goes out in production, it is approved or authorized, then that is also still trial. It is called phase four. And we would just continue to pull data even when it is out in the production. So I was trying to see that data. I haven't yet found it. Jay says, would the implementation of polysorbent 80 as mycel excipient to carry spike protein in Novavax be safer for someone with a sensitivity or allergy compared to the use of polysorbate 18 novavirus vaccine? So I do not know that if they are using polysorbate 18. They, their adjuvant is primarily matrix M. They say we are not using other things. And their adjuvant matrix M is further divided into two type of particles. Both are soponin. So maybe polysorbate 80 is a type of soponin. Um, and if it is the same, and if you are allergic to it, then you have the same problem. So can Novavax causes cause S1 in the macrophage theory of Dr. Bruce? So that's a good question. Short answer, yes. Why? In that case and in this case, eventually it is possible for the monocytes or macrophages or dendritic cells to eat up the spike proteins and try to digest them. That is what they are doing in other cases as well. And if that ends up causing S1 to stick in their endosome, and not be lysed or the endosome lysosome function uh, combination does not really digest the S1, then that risk will be present in this state as well. The only one mechanism that will occur less frequently will be that when a cell, let's say this is a cell, and that has pieces of spike protein exhibited and inside it has the pieces of spike proteins as well because it was it had made them let's say in this case it has eaten them then the other cells the immune system cells are going to look at this and say what the heck is this and they're going to how do i make them angry they're going to say what the heck and they're going to eat it including all of this s1 which would then be transferred in here the mechanism is slightly less than the messenger RNA or adenovirus RNA because, or DNA because in them there are normal tissue cells that are making more spikes as well. Here we are not making any more spikes than the spikes given and most of those spikes will be picked up by the immune system cells instead of regular cells. However, there still is a chance of S1 sticking around. So good question Fizan and short answer is Yes. Alice says, does it stay in the arm muscle? Yes. And again, I have done this discussion before and um, a few days ago, a friend of mine who I thought was a friend who wrote a hit piece, hit job, who did a hit job on me. And since then, there have been people who've been saying that Dr. Mubeen said that the spikes would stay in the tissue and they would not stay in the tissue and he, he's a liar. No, the Pfizer's paper from Japan does not show spikes going out into ovary. That shows pieces of lipid nanoparticles going there. We are vaccine hesitant or we are pro-vaccine. We should at least stand on our solid ground of correct information. We could still say, I don't like it, but then we would at least have a correct ground to say that. So here, once again, the how will the spike enter the blood vessel? The spike to enter, think about it. The blood vessel, the capillary, capillary and I'm going to do this in your presence here. Capillary size about 10 to 20 microns, right? So I didn't make it up, it is here, and you can then look it up in the blood vessel in the books as well. Another way to understand this is if you say RBC size, red blood cell size, seven to eight micron, 
Now, why did I say to connect these two? Here is why. The capillaries, so let's say this is an artery coming from heart, then it gives off branches. Every time it gives off branches, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, correct? Finally, it reaches, now these arteries have covering on them. Imagine these are like big pipes which have plastic or solid covering and nothing can get out or nothing can come in. If these blood vessels were so leaky that things can go in or out, then we would just die immediately because all of our fluids would get out of the blood vascular system and we'll die. We'll immediately die. That doesn't happen because blood system stays within the blood system, blood vessels. However, near the end of the arteries, there are arterioles which are also covered. And then there are capillaries. Now capillaries, if I make this part bigger, they are very small. They are, as you saw, 8 to 10 micron, microns. RBCs are supposed to get stuck in here and go from, I'm making them all rounded. They should be discs. This looks like spherocytosis. So my doctor friends, please forgive me. I am causing an anemia type here. But that is just because I'm drawing it like this. So they are like th these. When RBCs enter a capillary, they find it difficult to pass through that. They're kind of squeezed in it. When they're squeezed in it, when they're resisting to move, that causes pressure because from behind the RBCs, heart is pumping the blood and it is pushing the blood in the arteriolar system or arterial system while the RBCs are stuck in the capillaries and saying, I'm not going to move. So what would happen is that the pressure that comes in that causes filtration effect and that causes some nutrients to escape the capillaries. And then near the end of this drama, the venules are made and then bigger and bigger blood vessels are made and the RBCs kind of shoot through them and then all of a sudden the pressure drops which then allows the fluids or the trash to come back in the arteriolar in the venular or venous end of the capillary. Why did I say all of this? Because for this lipid nano for this bouquet of Novavax vaccine which is about 20 micron, for it to enter here, the blood vessel doesn't have sufficient size for it to enter there. Even if it becomes dilated, how would 20 micron traverse a capillary? So then how would this enter? You say, you know what, I want this to enter the blood system. Okay, let's do that. We create a bouquet here. We ask a macrophage or a monocyte to eat it up. And then that macrophage monocyte is going to start releasing inflammatory cytokines, chemokines, and those kind of things. Once they are released, the chemical substances, they would cause the neutrophils and other cells to say, oh my God, there is a war going on here. I can sense, I can smell the war by the chemical substances present in this area. They need to get out. What they usually do is they, they drill holes in these protected layers and then they come out. So that means they create damage in this area. Not really a damage, but this is a physiological mechanism. But still, they cause openings in the blood vessel walls. Those openings can be sufficient for the cap these bouquets to go into the blood vessel. So this means that some immune systems have cells have to eat up the bouquets, break them down, become mad, release chemokines, cause local vasodilatation, cause the neutrophils to come and drill holes in the basement membranes and the arteriolar uh, walls 
and then that might be an opportunity for some of these bouquets to get out. Now, next question to answer is this, where would these bouquet end up? Because these are clusters of the vaccine, let's answer this question first, that will they, and these are mechanisms, you can actually sit down with any doctor or any pathologist and say, let's do this mechanism. And they would do the same mechanism with you. So here are endothelial cells. And the endothelial cells have ACE2 on them. Correct? We know that. So let's say somehow we want these bouquets to attach to these ACE2. So now imagine if there are million spikes in this cluster. One of them is going to get attached. If it can get attached, the problem is the blood is flowing so fast. It's like fish going, running fast, and you are expecting one of the fish to quickly grab onto the, the edge of the river and get stuck. So now you have a bouquet that is under pressure to run, and then one of the spike is supposed to get stuck with the S2, and then stop the bouquet there. Okay, let's say this would happen in some world that would happen. Then this is one. ACE2 that has trapped a million spikes. That is one cell that might get disrupted. Not a big deal. What would happen to the rest? The rest of the blood would continue to go. It would go in the heart. Now, could it cause myocarditis in the heart? Possible. Because in the heart, the blood is not rushing at fast. So could these spikes, if they accumulate in the heart, which I really doubt, but I am playing a possibility of creating damage. So let's say the, the spikes have entered here somehow, two or three clusters. Can they attach to the endothelium here? Yes. Can they cause a local tiny microscopic inflammation? Yes. This is why I said I want to see their data to say why are they saying balance, number one. Number two, I want to see data from Malaysia and from Europe to see have these been safe there? Now, if they continue to come out of the, the heart, then eventually they would once again enter the arterial, arterial system. From there, when the blood goes to spleen, spleen is like the big sponge of the system whose job is to clean such things. Liver does it and spleen does it. So when the blood now enters the spleen, as I mentioned yesterday, spleen has sinusoids in them or very tiny uh, refined filters, and it has the macrophages in them. And those macrophages' job is that as trash collects on those filters, they eat it up and remove it. So in theory, these spikes can be removed here. So this is the possibility. If we assume for a second that all of these, this mechanism is able to be provided, then here is what would happen. Okay, so go back here to the questions. Why not we do this? Let me answer a few questions here and then maybe I, let's see if I can. Does it stain the arm muscle? So Alice, the answer is kind of mixed, depends upon how much inflammation, how many spikes could escape. It would, the spikes would be picked up by the local immune system. Some of that would flow in the lymph and go to the lymph nodes. Maybe some pieces would go in the blood as well. Zen Land says, how do the lipid nanoparticle differ from messenger RNA version? What about the mutation at the ferrin cleavage site? So uh, furin cleavage site. So this is there are no lipid nanoparticles, there are sop soponins, but they're not acting like a lipid nanoparticle. So this whole structure, Zenlin, has neither mRNA nor LNPs in them. Although if we can call soponins, little LNPs, but they're not behaving like those vehicles to bring these spikes in the cell. Karen says, compare the lipid nanoparticle in Novavax to the ones in messenger RNA. I just explained it a few pictures away over here that the 
lipid nanoparticles here or the soponins here are not containing the clusters of the vaccine. They are simply part of that solution. And so their total job is to irritate the immune system cells. Okay, so then RB long hauler says, many long haulers, including myself, waited because of our overactive immune system. I still have an overactive immune system. So how would Novavax be different? That is something that cannot be predicted. The good news, for example, if, uh, my apologies, I hit the mic. If I have an overactive immune system, and if I took a vaccine, and it kind of caused a reaction, I will be afraid of all vaccines after that. May that be Novavax or Messenger or adenovirus. To me, it would be a difference that in case of messenger RNA or DNA-based vaccines, these cells are going to be producing more, more of these spikes, which would kind of put immune system on the notice to say react. In this case, there are no further for the production of the, the spike proteins, but the spike proteins are coming in from outside and then they are being picked up. The question is, the adjuvant, is that strong enough to elicit a similar immune response as would happen here with the messenger RNA? That's what I cannot answer because I do not know. I'm so sorry, RB long hauler. One, I'm so sorry that you are in this long hauling state. I hope you're taking help. Um, and secondly, this is an area where I cannot answer because I do not have the answer to their question, uh, their mechanism. Kate says, Novavax has full length spike protein. Yes. What's the difference between how the virus enters your body via Novavax and how it enters your body via catching the virus? Can faulty injection lead to spike protein circulating in the bloodstream? So I gave that answer in detail. How much protection does Novavax give regarding Omicron? So that they still have to give us data. And after this talk, if cool beans have the stamina, I'm going to look at the Alberta data with you, where it is a very interesting slice of data in, in the time of Omicron versus previous time. So, or we can do it tomorrow. Uh, so here, going back to your question, Kate, how much protection does Novavax give regarding Omicron? I would suspect it gives good protection because these are spikes, but still, is the efficacy dropped like other vaccines? That data I don't have yet. So I will definitely update us. I'm looking into this data. I'm finding it. Peter Pham says, I did the clinical trial, got COVID in July, July, and they didn't record it as one of the cases in their sub submission to FDA. That's interesting. And Anna responds and says, how you know they didn't record it? Did you record the symptoms in the app? Did you took the three PCR tests that they provided? I'm confused. So Peter, so Peter is a friend of mine. Peter, I'll, I'll connect with you separately as well to understand more. Cannabis says spike or no spike? Yes, spike. It is a spike. Coffee Travel says some spike protein mechanism, same spike protein mechanism, spike protein itself has the same mechanism, production of the spike protein, presence of the spike protein, location of the spike protein is different. The cells involved are different. In the messenger RNA and uh, adenovirus-based, DNA-based systems, normal citizen cells will get involved as well because they'll pick up these viruses or lipid nanoparticles and they would inadvertently make spike proteins and then unwantedly or unknowingly become participant in the war. This spike protein is not going to be picked up by normal cells because they don't have a way to pick it up. It is not wrapped in a lipid nanoparticle to, to ship it in them. It will have to be picked up by immune system cells who are professional cells whose job is to pick up such things, break them apart, and then work with them. Now, the S1 piece, can that get stuck in them? Yes. Is it really made of moths and <laughs> root beer? So yes, so <laughs> saponin, somebody already answered. Bobby asked that. Anna said, it's incubated on our army moths. And yes, saponin is used to, made, to make root beer. 
So yes, these are moth cells. So what happens is the actual RNA, the RNA for the for the spike protein is put in, and I've done a detailed discussion, put in a pathogen in a bacteria. So it is injected in it. This is what we call recombinant technology. I actually um, shared that video today. The video's title is You Would Love This Vaccine. And I had done it when there was a lot of folks who were concerned about messenger RNA and they were concerned about DNA. And so I said, this does not have those things. That's why this title, it's not an insistence that you must love it. It's maybe you would hate it. Anyway, so here, this is a little pathogen. This pathogen is, its DNA is modified to add the spike protein DNA on it. Then this path pathogen is introduced in a moth cell. This is where the moths come together. So when this pathogen goes in there, inside there it makes spike proteins. Those spike proteins are then the cell is killed or destroyed like an egg. And then the supernatant is taken out. The spike proteins that are released from it, they are taken out. And that is bottled, refined and purified and bottled. So your first question, does it have moth or is it made in moth? Yes. So it is not made in human fetal tissue type systems. Uh, second part, uh, is it made on root beer? So the saponins are involved, yes. Um, so just a few more questions, so let's see. Hi, Dr. Bean, can we compare doses of Novavax, five microgram of protein with Pfizer, 30 microgram of messenger RNA? Five is lesser than 30, yes. So is Novavax lower dose or we can't compare because they're different products? The question is out of that 30, how much of that is gonna go in the cell? How many proteins are going to be made in response? So that's a very difficult thing to do until we do a radio, poor Luffy, grounded Luffy, um, until we radio label them and we see their concentration. And we have the Pfizer study with the radio labeling and the concentration. We don't have Novavax study yet. So very, uh, for me, it is very difficult to um, think about it without those type of studies. <laughs> is it safe and effective? So <laughs> I just read this according to that, yes. But we'll have to have, uh, all vaccines were authorized and approved based on safe and effective. At this time, in my opinion, efficacy is dropping, and this is not something that is just my opinion. Data is showing with Omicron, their effect, efficacy is dro dropping. Safety profiles are being read as well. So for me, it was interesting that the FDA was supposed to provide this data. And then why did Pfizer come into the game? Pfizer should have stayed away. Their, their job is to, anyways. So then they came in and fortunately the judge has rejected both of these parties, which are not supposed to be one party, their, their request. So again, safe and effective, we'll find out. Jared says, what is the fear of the adjuvants? Some adjuvants were themselves harmful and they would cause too much immune responses or they would cause too much immune dysregulations or they would act as antigen, which might cause mimicry and attack would occur on our own body. That is a fear. These adjuvants are at least claimed to be modern systems. They have lesser of the issues as in the past vaccines. You can think of this like an older car and a newer car, and a newer car is more and more polished and more. You look at the issues with the old car and you see how do we prevent them. But still, we have to see the data. Dennis says, good question. Risks associated with myocarditis, so I have to come back on this data. Why would you take a COVID vax if you have and had COVID and recovered? Natural immunity is strong and lasts much longer. So I have done those discussions many times. So I think it seems like a rhetorical question. Then there are more. Andre says, sorry, didn't see your video yet. 
Question, what is your assessment of the side effects of spike protein? Is it toxic as some have suggested? When spike proteins are put on cells, they can bind with the ACE2 and cause imbalance in the inflammatory and anti-inflammatory system. Plus, they can cause the cell's signaling disruption and cause the cell to not function correctly. That much of toxicity of spike protein is understood and known in, through studies. The ACE2 and ACE1 and that imbalance, I think I was one of the early ones who discussed those uh, one and a half year ago. So it's not a new thing. We know that. The, the spike protein toxicity with binding to the ACE2 and doing secondary messenger system, that is understandable as well because the nitric oxide related, uh, NO related, um, antioxidant systems and muscle relaxing systems will become disrupted. So that is a kind of damage that can occur. The question is, how far does the spike go to do that? US of Banana Repel Republic says, no, I don't trust it. Okay, thank you. I've got good question. Says, yes, why are we still pretending that we can vaccinate against a respiratory virus? Does this one produce IgA? Won't it fail too? Um, it's a good question. It's not necessary that we can produce great IgA unless we have those nasal and mouth oral type vaccines. And I would really wish that those vaccines are given a chance as well. So to that extent, yes. But still, it is not that the respiratory viruses cannot, especially this kind of a virus that becomes sy systemic. The other human coronaviruses like to just stay up here and just not bother us in the remaining system. But this Omicron is becoming that way as well, but still it is causing people to die. And when it causes them to die, what does it do? It goes deeper in the system. It causes lung damage. It causes body damage. It causes cytokine dysregulation. And that in some people, it can kill them. So it's not just the respiratory virus. But I understand your point. And that is, hey, if we can block the mucous membranes, then its landing in the mouth and nose can be blocked. And yeah, I would love nasal vaccines. William says, does the Novavax spike protein bind, fuse, and then enter the cell body? It can bind with it, RBD. I don't think it can really enter because it is that cluster. It's a bouquet. Unless there is a broken spike protein, the but then how would that enter a cell? It will have to be picked up by an immune system cell and destroyed. William says, one more question. Compare Novavax phase 3 trial results with Pfizer in detail, for example, or, or cause mortality after six months. I'll have to do that separately, William. Wall writer says, long-term data. I don't have it. Miss Mamba M says, following. I want to know more about the CRISP technology, but not sure if already covered. We have talked about a little bit about CRISPR technologies in the context of these vaccines, not separately. Branov says, question, does it address all the 29 proteins, full length of the wild type, strand or select few? Just the spike. Mai says, for those of us that have had long lasting symptoms with the mRNA vaccine, man, this is so sad that people are suffering with these resembling long haul COVID. Would this likely cause the same issue since it uses spike as well with what is known about spike toxicity? Why are they choosing to, sue, to use spike still? So short answer is yes. If spike causes an issue, then this has spikes too. NJW2 Townsend, NJW Townsend says, theoretically, what would happen if one were to take ivermectin with Novavax? Would that stop the immune response? Not really. So here is why. This is a very good question. I love it. So let's say theoretically, we accept a drug like ivermectin or any other such drug. It's a fantasy drug. Let's make up. That can bind with the spike protein. Right? So this is a spike protein. Let's say that drug can bind here and interfere with the ACE2. Correct? Here. Will that affect the efficacy of the vaccine? No. Why not? Because we are really not banking on this spike to connect with ACE2 and be eaten up. 
we are actually hoping that this cluster is picked up by a macrophage, by a macrophage. And that picking up is a very different mechanism. That mechanism is phagocytosis or that is endocytosis. It has nothing to do with the ACE2s. So even if one spike is holding on to an ACE2, there is nothing else it can do. So it's a beautiful question, but this spike protein is in a cluster, will be eaten up by the macrophages, dendritic cells, or monocytes, or even neutrophils. And the mechanism of picking it up, detecting it, they would detect it through what we call tall like receptors. Tall like receptors are ELRs, are pattern matching receptors that can see bad patterns. And they can then eat that thing up and then digest it, break it, and present it. That's a good question. I can talk about that for a couple of hours. Sim Tweeney says, Doc, I think we need to change strategy. The one thing Fauci got right of this whole pandemic is we're all going to get Omicron. I see absolutely no need for anybody to get any pre-Omicron vaccine like Novavax or Hotzvax, et cetera, except over 65 and additional comorbid. So I don't know unless we look at the data. I would agree in general that those folks who have comorbidities or are at risk, for them, vaccines are very, very helpful. Now, the question is the data. That's why I wanted to discuss Alberta's data because, <coughs> excuse me, because there is a very interesting data point in there. The second thing is the long COVID outcomes, even when the infection is milder. That, again, this spike uh, or the vaccine can cause injury as well. So very difficult decisions. Data would help. Looking at the data, looking at the percentage of, uh, of risk would help. Okay, so then, Grace. Given the recent CDC study on immunity from previous infection, would you advise young, healthy, unvaccinated patient take this if they have recovered from COVID in the last 12 months? Who would be advised to take it? So look, I cannot advise. So, but I believe in infect, uh, immunity acquired by natural infection is robust. I had shared a study in which they said there is long lasting immunity because some of the memory cells end up in the bone marrow as well and they stay there as long lasting immune system cells. German Mart says, I have a concern, doctor. Would be this new Novavax nanolipid gluing the spike a possible source of immunity toxicity if self? since it's new thing that our body encountered for the first time in the context that there is some data about Pfizer nanolipid doing strange things. So the Pfizer na nanolipid itself is not, that study is still being misused, was not really about spikes going here and there. Pieces of lipids going there into various cells and then getting cleared out, that is what cells do all the time. But if I just take the point to say, there can be vaccine-related injuries or vaccine-related side effects by various parts of the vaccine or mechanisms of the vaccine, then this can do it too. It is a spike protein. I just think that the from a mechanism point of view, it has a lesser chance than others. But we have to look at data. The best thing, first we look at mechanism, we make up our opinion and our mind, then we look at the data to confirm that or refute that, to say, okay, we thought it is this way, but the data shows no. Or we thought it is this way and the data shows it is that way. William says, what do you think of this paper's implications? I'll look into that separately. I have actually already talked about it, anti-idiotype antibodies. Already did it. Actually, if this is, if I'm correct, this is by Professor William. Yeah, William Murphy. So I am actually, I was supposed to meet him on this 8th tomorrow, but uh, I rescheduled. So we'll be meeting on this 20th. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, to his university and meet him on 20th of this uh, February. So um, William, I have actually done a discussion about it. What was the title of that discussion? The title was... Uh, The immune system vaccines might cause T cell 
weakness or immune, immune cell weakness, something like that. Insanity, well, the, these continue to go. So I think I should stop here. I'll come back to these at a later time. Let's look at YouTube. Gerald says my brain is still scrambled, crunching numbers. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. YouTube chat said, did you mean Merck? Um, I don't even remember if you're talking with me about this. Do you want to look at Alberta data today or you want to look at that tomorrow? I wanted to see Alberta data, California data, UK data and kind of make some opinions about the kind of risks we are seeing for various cohorts. Uh, it may need a little deeper dive, although I think half an hour will be okay. Yes, Colombian bean, yeah, T-cell exhaustion was the name. So the friend here who asked this question, that Dr. Williams uh, study, he actually sent me a note after I did it saying, hey, thank you for doing my uh, presenting my study, I, I enjoyed it, and I then we talked, and I said, "Let's meet," and I'm going to meet him. Okay, so there are no lipids. Yeah, when some people call soap and in soaps. Okay. Fran says, can Omicron enter via the eyes? All SARS-CoV-2 viruses can enter through mucous membranes, including eyes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's stop here. So Little says it's Canadian bedtime. So sorry. <laughs> so we'll do it tomorrow. Let's look at Alberta. I will probably do some of the talks earlier tomorrow to di discuss this data so i want to have a few data points to discuss thank you very much for your time today uh, thank you for hanging out with me for three talks including luffy grounding uh, please like subscribe and share and if you like to support this work there are links in the description you can buy me a coffee or use paypal or you can be a patron thank you very much and this is not a compulsion to support. We are all here hanging out together. So stay safe and I would see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.